subscribe this channel by pressing this button for being updated from biomedical and healthcare society hello guys welcome back to the channel today we gonna study about biological pressures and flow transducers this is the very first lecture from the series of this subject biological pressures and flow transducers so without any further delay let's get started we gonna study about the various biological pressures and flows occurs in our body and what types of transducers we are using for measurement of these flows and pressures in this chapter the agenda of this chapter includes the introduction of this biological pressures and flow transducers pressure transducers physiological pressures blood pressure measurement methods flow transducers electromagnetic blood flow probe ultrasonic blood flow transducers respiratory gas flow transducers and breathing analyzers all these topics are being going to be covered in this chapter of the course so very first we will be having the introduction of our basic elements of this things uh, which are the transducers and sensors and in that very first we gonna see about the transducers we have already studied about the definitions of the transducers as well as sensors in the previous chapters but still i will revise it in the transducer is a device which converts primary form of energy into another form of energy for the measurement purpose also we can say that it is a device which converts one form of non readable energy quantity to the readable energy quantity the primary energy forms that we are having this is the in form of the optical form that is the light form the mechanical movement form the chemical form the thermal that is a heat form the electromagnetic form and many more are present out there parallelly if you see about the sensors those are the devices which senses the change in the parameter as per the block diagram we are having below the physical variable change that can be measured with the help of sensors and the passive element which we are having as in the form of the <coughs> sensor that can be give you the data of the change in this element pressure transducers for understanding this trans type of transducer we should know about the basic definition of pressure pressure is force per unit area applied in a direction perpendicular to the surface of an object in formalactical manner we can say that pressure is equals to force upon area the si unit for pressure is pascal and we can clearly see that pressure is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the area so if we take any example regarding that if you are applying force okay in the area per unit area if the area is very small the force will be high and the pressure will be high as per the proportionality we are having so we can you clearly understand the concept of pressure in that types of pressure measurement in this we are having some of the types which is used for the pressure measurement very first in that we are having the gauge pressure which is one of the type then we are having the absolute pressure measurement then we have the sealed reference pressure measurement and lastly we are having going to see about a differential pressure measurement which is the most common among the pressure measurement methods in this we are having the electric pressure transducers after that we going to see about the elastic pressure transducers we going to have this manometer method for pressure measurement 
we gonna see about the pressure measurement by measure vacuum also we have the pressure measurement by the balancing forces these are the methods for the pressure measurement which are commonly in use for measurement of the pressure very first we gonna see about the electric pressure transducer as per the definition says it is an instrument component which detects a fluid pressure and produces an electrical signal that is related to the pressure generally electrical pressure transducer consists of the three elements very first in that we are having the pressure sensing element second element is the primary conversion element third element in this will be the secondary conversion element these are the element which is usually present in the electrical pressure transducer what we have seen very first we have seen about the pressure sensing element example if you are going to see about that is bellows or we can say a diaphragm or a burden tube second we have seen is primary conversion element in example if you see about that it's a kind of a resistance or a voltage and third one we have the secondary conversion element these three are the elements present for the electrical pressure transducer types of electrical pressure transducer or we can say electric pressure transducer very first we are having strain gauge pressure transducer then we gonna see about the potentiometer pressure transducer we have the reluctance pressure transducer physioelectric pressure transducer capacitive pressure transducer strain gauge pressure transducer strain gauge is a passive type of resistance pressure transducer whose electric resistance changes when it is stretched or compressed it can be attached to a pressure sensing diaphragm they are available for a wide range of measurement in vacuum if you see the measurement is from vacuum to 2 lakh psig basically the working mechanism of strain gauge is deals with the stress and strain compression when we add the strain on the gauge the mechanism the spring like mechanism is there as we are seeing in this block diagram we are having the strain gauge compensating gauge flexible beam pressure bellow range so whenever we are applying the pressure there is a change in the strain of the gauge and as per the change in the strain of the gauge the resistance is being changed and as per the change in that tradition the electrical components is being changed and we gonna measure that change in electric component and we will get the exact pressure reading for that thing strain gauge pressure transducers in that we're gonna see the construction and working mechanism so in the first block of the diagram we can see the two images very first images is about the wire resistance strain gauge and the second image is the double bonded strain gauge if we compare these two images we can see some changes both are the strain gauges but we are having the specific property of working mechanism and the property of reading and working and we can say the implementation of the pressure which is for the use for the measurement of the strain change which gives you the result for the pressure measurement so if you see about the wire resistance strain gauge in this we can see we are having four strain gauge elements okay these four strain gauge elements are nothing but the variable resistors which will vary as per the change and implementation of pressure in that element in the below diagram we can see the pressure is been inserted from the one point and the diaphragm will be having one addition with the movable block which will do the movement until the fixed points 
as per the pressure is being inserted or applied on this thing and as per the movement of the diaphragm in the movable block there will be a change in strain cause element which will be in the terms of the change in resistance and that will be change will be measured in the time of voltage and we can get the data of the pressure change that was about the wire resistance strain gauge if you see the double bounded strain gauge in this instead of having the four strain gauge element we are having only two strain gauge element and two fixed resistors over here and if you see the implementation area of the pressure is having a little bit change over here of earlier we are having one movable block attached with the diaphragm and the fixed points but over here we are having only one diaphragm attached with the strain gauges there is no movable blocks in this and as per the pressure implementation there is the change in the diaphragm movement and that change the diaphragm movement causes the change in the resistance of the strain gauge element and as per that change we can see the change in voltage and as per that voltage change we can see the change in the pressure and we can get the data of the pressure so these were the common type of the strain gauge which you have seen the working mechanism the next image shows one of the commonly used strain gauge pressure transducer in that we can clearly see the lead wires grid wire flexible block so in this what's happening we are applying the force towards the left and right side as it is mentioned over there and as per the force is been applied there is a change in length of the grid wire okay so these grid wire is nothing much more than if you compare with the previous image they are the strain gauge elements as per this grid wire is having the change in their length because this block is flexible block and we are applying force towards the both the sides so whenever the force is applied towards the both sides there is in the kind of stretched one so the stretched element of the grid wire so due to that stretch which is happening due to the application of the force there is a change in resistance due to the change in length of the grid wire and this grid wire is acting as a strain gauge element so there is due to the change in resistance we are going to get the change in the voltage and due to that change in voltage we can clearly detect the pressure advantages of using strain gauge pressure transducers includes because these are very small and easy to install they are small in size and we can easily install it they are having good accuracy and with good accuracy they are having very good stability also they are having high output signal strength whatever the range capacity is they are having it is easy to maintain and simple to maintain the best part is that they do not have any kind of movable parts into it they are readily adaptive to electronic components and fast speed of response it means they are having very good speed of response and easily implementable to any electrical component as we have the seen the, the advantage or as we have seen the advantage of this one we are having disadvantage also in the disadvantage side they are having some of the parameters like their cost is moderate to high like it's not uh, like uh, very cheap in cost okay sometimes if you want to go to buy very a uh, good quality of the strain gauge it will be very high in cost but starting medium level so not every time we can go and afford these things the electrical readout is necessary in these transducers that's other obvious thing because we are dealing with the change in the uh, length of the grid wire and due to the change in length of the grid wire the resistance is changing and due to the changing in the resistance the changing in the voltage reading is there and that as per that changing in voltage reading we are detecting the change in the pressure so these require the electrical readout which is sometimes being like little bit typical to read all those things obviously they require constant voltage supply to work on and as per that constant voltage supply only we will be able to see 
and we can say we will be able to see and monitor the things and change happening due to the application of the change of the forces on it and those things they require temperature composition due to the problem presented by the temperature variation obviously it requires the temperature compensation thing because these elements are flexible in nature and because of like being anything in the flexible in nature they were having the porous quality and this porous quality if the temperature is high or if the temperature is low the flexibility of that material can be the will not be able to compensate up to that much extent it which is required and due to that reason only the strain gauge will be having the a disability of having that application of the force properly and the grid wire movement will be not up to that mark and as per that grid wire movement is not up to the mark we will not be able to have the proper change in the resistance and if we are not having the proper change in the resistance we will not be able to have the proper change in the voltage measurement and if we will not get the proper change in the voltage measurement we will not have the proper readability of the pressure change and we will not be have to be the accurate I mean to say that we will not get the accurate reading of the strain gauge pressure measurement. So that's why the temperature compensation is very much important in this uh, device. Okay, next we are having this one potentiometric pressure transducer. This is one of the type of the pressure transducer after the strain gauge we have seen, and uh, there is a potentiometer. that is a basically a variable resistance which is made uh, by the winding resistance around the insulated cylinder okay uh, a movable electrical contact called as a wiper slides along the cylinder that touches the wire at one point and the each turn if you try to imagine a thing like we have a cylindrical kind of thing and it's Insulated with the wire all around that, and each and every slide that is on every wrap of that wire, uh, on that cylinder, that wire is touching to the cylinder at one point, at least at one point of a time. Okay, and uh, the a uh, mechanical linkage from the pressure sending element, sensing element, like uh, we have seen in the diaphragm, as of such as bellows, that controls the position of the wiper on the potentiometer. like we earlier we have seen in the strain gauge case we have having the dif diaphragm and that diaphragm is added with the movable part okay in this we are having this movable instead of having that movable part we are having a wiper kind of thing that will act as a pressure sensing element into this potentiometric pressure transducer the position of a wiper determines the resistance of the potentiometer which in turn determine the pressure as per the position of wiper is being changed the resistance is being changed in the potentiometer and as per that resistance is changed in the potentiometer we will ca can determine the change in pressure or we can determine the pressure which is been reluctance to that particular interval of time with an implementation to the instrument okay now the working principle of this uh, potentiometric pressure transducer so it's uh, an increase in pressure makes the bosun tube straighten out partially this motion causes the linkage to move the wiper across the winding on the potentiometer as the wiper moves it increases the resistance between terminals a and b which is equal to the pressure sensing by the bosun tube if you see this diagram okay this we see this diagram below we we have can clearly see that pressure in is there we are applying pressure of pressure is there then we have seen the bosun tube linkage wiper and resistance a and c points resistance out point so as we are implementing the pressure from the pressure in point there is will be the change in the length of the bosun tube and as per the change in length of the bosun tube there is a movement in the wiper is happening due to because the wiper is totally linked with this bosun tube and as per the change in the length of the bosun tube due to the uh, implementation of the pressure the wiper is giving the movement on that uh, cylindrical flask we are using which is we can say give you the measurement of the change in resistance like a and c we are seeing over there 
a and b is the length of that uh, resistive terminal and in that c is the moment of the wiper we can clearly see and that is being shows as per the moment give this the resistance reading and that resistance reading been measured and as per that the pressure variation is been calculated okay advantages of using the potentiometric pressure transducer so in this way it will provide you the strong output and you do not need any kind of additional amplifier parallelly they are having very high range and very high ruggedness that is you can have the high range of pressure measurement this bellow tube is very high stable in nature so we if you apply the high pressure also you can get the data of the high range pressure they have the simple instrumentation have high electrical efficiency and are inexpensive the instrumentation part is very simple that is we have bellow tube tube we have a linkage point we have a wiper we have a cylindrical part which includes a wrap of the wire and that will give you the change in resistance and as per the change in resistance we can clearly determine the change in pressure or the presence of pressure into it and uh, there is very high electrical efficiency that is the, we are just determining the change in resistance okay as per the implementation of the pressure so it's not uh, a big deal to understand the concept of having using this potentiometric transducer and it that includes a very high efficacy and there is no implementation of high electricity towards it just the implementation of pressure is required due to the very less use of the electrical components over here so the charging cost is very low and it is not so much as expensive as it has the advantages it has a disadvantages also that uh, that the resolution of this potentiometer pressure transducer is finite that is it's limited okay and that's the uh, it has a limited life because it has a limited life why i'm saying like this because once the this balloon tube is been uh, i will say this balloon tube is disrupted then you will not be able to get the precise reading of the pressure because it has a large in size it is not feasible to use at every places they have a poor frequency of response and tendency to develop noise also we can that this point is absolutely correct that is the their frequency is we have to continuously apply the pressure to understand the concept okay you have to apply the pressure to measure that okay whether you when you are applying the pressure you have to notice this thing whether the change in resistance is happening or not otherwise you will not be able to get the data of the response okay so you have to uh, clearly implement the pressure at the proper interval of time parallelly the tendency of the to develop noise because this is a change in uh, movement of this wiper is happening over there that gives you the noise pattern so that is also not feasible much next type we going to see about the reluctance pressure transducers so reluctance in a uh, magnetic circuit circuit is equivalent to resistance in an electrical circuit so we can clearly uh, just relate that resistance whatever we are having in the electrical components and to the reluctance in the magnetic circuits both are similar in nature in terms of measurement so um whenever coupling between two magnetic coils changes then reluctance between them also changes pressure sensor can be used to change the spacing between the coils by moving one part of magnetic circuit the motion changes the reluctance between the coils and causes the change voltage induced by one coil in another this induced voltage can be interpreted as a change in pressure so we can imagine two magnetic coils okay and the <clears throat> coupling between these two coils is the resistance right or is the reluctance basically but we are relating with the resistance that's why i said resistance over here so that magnetic coil if you create a space between these two magnets which is coupled with the coils okay the the reluctance between them will also change okay 
if the reluctance between this magnet is changing that is the resistance in between the circuit is changing there is the change in pressure is occurring in between them because the pressure is required to make this change the pressure is being implemented between these coils separately to separate them to create a space in between them okay so as the circuit is having uh, like we can do two things over here very first thing we are separating two magnets from the both the sides or we can do one thing like we can just fix one magnet and we just move another magnet up and down like that to create the spacing between the coils two thing we can do that in two way we can do that i mean to say that so in this uh, we are having the pressure sensor over here the, due to that change in this spacing the reluctance between the coils is changing which causes the change in voltage change in how we are getting the change in voltage this volt this coils in inducing some for a magnetic voltage between them from one coil to another and as per we are making the difference between them distance between between implementing the distance so there is a change in reluctance and that change in voltage is induced in the one coil to the another and due to this change in voltage we can clearly implement or understand the change in pressure and that measurement will give you the data of the pressure change that was in the reluctance pressure transducer in that we are having several types like uh, LVDT we have seen the servo and the another one is servo pressure transducer LVDT is the linear variable differential transformer kind of thing in this year instead of transformer we are gonna see about a transducer over here so it is why LVDT is widely used inductive transducer that translate linear motion into an electrical signal so as per the diagram we are seeing we are having the very first pressure input then we are having the bellows then we are having the AC excitation coil magnetic core then we are having the AC DC converter and last one we are having the output voltage output so whenever we are implementing the pressure as an input towards the bellow the magnetic core which are having the moment magnet fixed magnets over here having the moment in this coil moment and as per the coil is already having the AC excitation that means the magnetic core is already having the magnetic components over here and it is already generating an amount of voltage so there's that due to that moment is there this change in the voltage and that voltage is converted into AC to DC converter through the AC to DC converter that is being changed into DC and we are getting the voltage output over here and as per the change in the voltage output that we are getting in the form of a reading we can see the amount of pressure which been applied into that in the form of input and we will get a data of pressure that is in the LVDT okay the advantages of having this reluctant pressure transducer is that it poses a high sensitivity it is having very high sensitivity very rugged in construction and has infinite resolution it shows a low hysteresis it tolerates high degree of shock it vibration and it's very stable as per the construction we have seen the diagram that it is having the magnets, coils, voltage reader, voltage converter, AC DC supply, pressure implementation area, bellows. So the, the the construction is very rugged, I mean to say that. And due to the construction is rugged, it is very stable. It is free from vibration. I mean to say that not fully free from the vibration, but the vibration is very low. Which gives you the like uh, high tolerances to in terms of the shock okay in disadvantages we are having this they are having sensitive to stray material fields but shielding is possible they are very sensitive to the stray material fields okay but with the having the shielding we can prevent uh, that uh, stray ma magnetic fields to affect uh, the coil Parallelly, the temperature affects the performance of the transducer here also. As we have seen in the strain gauge pressure transducer, the temperature is one of the factors that is affecting uh, the strain gauge um, pressure transducer uh, working mechanism. In this also, the reluctant pressure transducer is also getting affected by the uh, 
uh, change in uh, temperature affects the performance. Next is Physioelectric Pressure Transducer. These devices utilizes the physioelectric characteristic of certain crystalline and ceramic material like quartz to generate an electric signal. Those signals generated by the crystals decays rapidly so unsuitable for static forces or pressure measurement. The range of this piezoelectric pressure transducer is starts from 5000 to 10000 psig. As we can see in this block diagram, very left we are having this one P1 as a pressure input, then we are having the diaphragm, then we can clearly see the pressure sensing crystal which is connected to the differential ampli charge amplifier over here and uh, we are having the components of two crystals in that one, one is the pressure sensing crystal Y1 and another is the compensation crystal Y2 and further it is added to the charge amplifier further it is added to the difference amplifier to get the data whenever the implementation of pressure P1 is there there is a change in movement of the diaphragm and as per the change in movement of the diaphragm the pressure is being sensed by the crystal 1 okay and that data is being transmitted to the charge amplifier and the charge amplifier will do the transmit the data to the difference amplifier and as per that data we got from the charge amplifier and uh, that data is been transmitted to the difference amplifier and that data is being read to the, as in terms of the pressure at how much amount of pressure is being used how much amount of pressure is being implemented at the part P1 in the forms of electrical signal the advantages of uh, using this physioelectric pressure transducer includes uh, because of having the good frequency response because this transducer not need any kind of external power these are the advantages also it includes the disadvantages also in that we are having this type of transducer cannot measure static pressures that's sure for definitely for sure because we need the dynamic force pressure to be been applied to see the change in the signals that we are getting in the form of electrical components to the crystals that's why we uh, have to use the dynamic pressure over here we cannot use the static pressure to for the measurement part output of the transducer is affected by the changes in the temperature as we have seen in the strain gauge pressure transducer parallel in the electric pressure transducer this physioelectric pressure transducer also have the effect from the temperature change so over here also the output is being affected by the change in the temperature capacitive pressure transducer the term capacitor is defined as Two metal plates are separated by a distance T. A dielectric medium is placed between the plates. When voltage or potential difference is applied to them, equal and opposite charges is getting developed on the plates. A capacitive transducer works on the principle of capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. In the diagram we can see very left we are having the implementation area of pressure that is just above the diaphragm in the static position. Whenever the pressure is being applied diaphragm is changes its position and it is shown as the diaphragm when pressure is applied in that figure. Uh, just below after that we have the dielectric medium that is been added with the fixed plate above the insulated material before the cavity under the housing and as per the change in the implementation of the pressure 
the diaphragm changes its movement and as per that movement is in the diaphragm the dielectric medium is changing its property which is added on the fixed plate and the insulating material with the change in capacitance is occurring and as per the change in capacitance is occurring that is been measured in terms of the pressure the usual equation of measuring the capacitance is e not multiplied with e r multiplied with a whole divided by d where c is the capacitance of the capacitor in farad a is the area of each plate in meter square d is the distance between two plates in meter epsilon not r is a dielectric constant and epsilon not e is having some value 8 into 854 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter square the capacitive transducers pressure is utilized to vary any of the above mentioned factors the factors we have seen right now that is area in meter square distance of the two plates that is a t epsilon naught that is a dielectric constant and epsilon naught r that is the 8 into 854 into 10 to the power farad meter square all these can be varied by the utilization of this pressure in the capacitive pressure transducer these factors will once this factor is been varied there will be change in capacitor and that is measurable by any suitable electric bridge circuit and that is directly proportional to the pressure the advantages of using this pressure transducer in the terms of capacitance is these transducers are very high input impedance and require small force for operation these transducers are having good frequency response and less affected by stray magnetic fields the disadvantages of using this type of pressure transducer is the guard rings are necessary so as it to minimize stray electric fields they require complex circuit arrangement like bridge the performance may be affected by the parameter like dust and temperature physiological pressure in our body there are different physiological pressure is present like pressure blood pressure in larger arteries blood pressure in larger veins blood pressure in eyes pressure in brain and spinal fluid pressure in bladder in different condition like filling condition and uh, when being full pressure in chest cavity between the lungs and ribs pressure inside the lung pressure in esophagus pressure in stomach pressure in intestine pressure in middle ear so we can clearly see by this table that there is a lot of physiological pressure which are being present in our human body some of them which we are very common to know that pressure in the lungs and pressure in the arteries or veins that basically we can we know the blood pressure and we know the lung pressure that is very common to us and we are very commonly known about that so the ideal blood pressure is maximum is uh, 120 that is the systolic and minimum is 80 that is the 120 by 80 systolic versus diastolic blood pressure and if you talk about the uh, inside lung pressure that is uh, in the range of minus 2 to plus 3 mercury okay if you talk about the blood pressure in the large veins it, that is in the range of 4 to 15 mercury if you talk about the blood pressure oh, sorry pressure in the eye is 12 to 24 mercury if you talk about the pressure in brain and spinal fluid it, that is in the range of 5 to 12 mercury if you talk the pressure in the bladder while filling it, that is from 0 to 25 mercury if you talk about the pressure in the bladder when it is full that is about 100 to 150 mercury 
chest cavity between lungs and rib is having the pressure of minus 8 mercury to minus 14 mercury inside the lungs the pressure is minus 2 to plus 3 mercury if you talk about the digestive tract in the esophagus we are having the minus 2 mercury that is the negative pressure the in the stomach we are having 0 to 20 mercury intestine we are having 10 to 20 mercury in middle ear we have less than 1 mercury whenever at all the points wherever i have seen the minus range that is a negative pressure that is a negative pressure been built it up over there and remaining part is having the positive pressure there are two types of pressure which is implemented in our body that is one is the negative pressure and another one is the positive pressure so we going to talk about the blood pressure it is very common to us and we have uh, heard about this blood pressure knowingly and unknowingly everywhere right in our homes also we have heard about the blood pressure so much and as i to see uh any individual who dealing with any kind of problem they are going to see about the blood pressure they're going to check on a check up for the blood pressure also so what is blood pressure blood pressure is the pressure of the blood in the arteries as it pumped around the body by the heart blood pressure do not stay same all the time that was the definition of the blood pressure and there are two types of pressure which are present in the blood very first is the systolic pressure the another one is the diastolic pressure the common arterial blood pressure measurement typically produce a value of 120 mm mercury and 80 mm mercury that is the systolic versus diastolic respectively okay in systolic we are having the ranging of 120 millimeter mercury and in diastolic we are having the range of 80 millimeter mercury both pressure will indicates the health implications there can be the pressure variation in the complication as per the variation occurs in the blood pressure of the individual This is a circular diagram of a circulatory system in that you can clearly see from the lung red one is the oxygenated blood right side and left side is the deoxygenated blood and you can clearly see the pressure variation at the different positions like when this it started from the lung it was around 8 mm mercury when it went to the heart and pumped out it is 120 mm mercury and further when it transmitted and till the capillaries it is around 35 mm mercury so why it is that much it is been after being pumped out the pressure is that much high because it has to reach the all the parts of the body that's why the pressure is very high that's why its systolic pressure is high in terms of measurement and when we see about diastolic pressure when the from the capillaries from the ventricles there the veins that are going back it starts from the capillary level that is having the pressure of 15 mm mercury and uh, while reaching towards the heart it leaves the pressure and becomes to the pressure of 4 mm mercury okay and uh, while again pumped back to the lungs it is having the pressure of 25 mm mercury while going back to there so that is the chronology of working mechanism of our circulatory system are having different pressure range of different pressure point okay so we can clearly see at aorta we are having 120 mm hg and at vena cava we are having 4 mm hg okay that is the pressure variation over here it's nothing related to systolic and diastolic just about the circulatory system where we are having what type of pressure we can clearly see in this diagram now for the blood pressure measurement we are having different methods very first is the auscultatory method second is the palpatory method third is the oscillometry method fourth comes the invasive method fifth non invasive method last one is continuous non invasive technique which is also known as cnap 
These are the blood pressure measurement methods. How to measure blood pressure? The arterial pressure is most commonly used to measure via a sphygmo manometer and historically used the height of the column of mercury to reflect the circulating pressure. Blood pressure values are generally reported in millimeter of mercury (mmHg). Measured by wrapping an inflated pressure cuff around patient's upper arm, this cuff is part of machine called sphygmo manometer. It is best to measure blood pressure when you are relaxed and sitting. Flow transducer Flow is defined as the quantity of fluid that passes a point per unit time. It can be presented by a sample equation that is flow is equals to quantity per unit of time. Flow transducer are used to measure air and liquid flow velocity it uses different measuring principle by means of the flow velocity analysis of unit of flow transducer can calculate the flow level or determine the amount of flow of the counter with the counter types of flow meter differential pressure flow meter Coriolis flow meter, vortex flow meter, ultrasonic flow meter, electromagnetic flow meter, thermal flow meter. All these are the types of flow meters which are being used integrated with the transducer for measurement of the flow. Very first, we want to see about a differential pressure flow meter. As the name suggests, differential pressure. That is, we are going to take some difference between the pressure, and uh, as per the difference between the pressure, we are going to measure the flow. That is, in our point of interest. So, 
so it works on the principle of partially obstructing the flow of in a pipe this create a difference in static pressure between the upstream and downstream of the device so the difference between static pressure referred to as a differential pressure is measured and used to determine the flow rate of the flow so this is the typical equation delta p that is the change in pressure equals to half of rho v2 square minus of half of rho v1 square where v2 is equals to c not by root of 1 minus beta to the power 4 whole rooted of 2 minus pressure of a minus pressure of b upon rho and uh, q is equals to b2 s not in this whole equation where the beta is the ratio of meter diameter to pipe diameter that is 0.5 usually S0 is the cross sectional area of the orifice. V is the bulk velocity through the orifice or venturi or nozzle. C0 is a discharge coefficient that is nearby to be 0.61. So, this is the typical formula that has been used for the measurement of the pressure. <coughs> change in pressure and through which we gonna get the data of flow in the differential pressure flow transducer some of the most common type of differential flow meters are orifice flow meter venturi flow meter nozzle flow meter pilot tube flow meter Next we are going to see about the ultrasonic flow transducers. A type of flow meter that measures the velocity of a fluid with ultrasound to calculate volume flow. The measurement principle of this flow meter measures the average velocity along the path of an emitted beam of ultrasound by averaging the difference in measure transit time between the pulse of ultrasound propagating into and against the direction of the flow that is the transit time type or by measuring the frequency shift from the Doppler effect Doppler shift time so the basically the ultrasound flow transducer is a type of transducer which we are in which we are using basically the ultrasound waves to measure the flow change okay in the machine okay and uh, <coughs> and as per that the change in the ultrasound uh, distortion and we are getting the flow or volume flow whatever which is there in the gas so in this uh, we are having basically the two types right the very first in the transit time type and another one is the Doppler shift type. So both were the use in the principle of measurement for the getting the accurate reading of the flow. So left and right in this figure we have two diagrams. First is the transit time ultrasonic flow meter. The second one is the Doppler ultrasonic flow meter. So in this very first we are having the A image of the Z method, B image is the V method and C image is the W method. So in the Z method what's happening, we are having the circuitry part in that transmitter and receiver is added to at the two positions. One is at the top and one is at the bottom. Okay. And the flow is inside between the cavity. That includes the making it in the form of Z. That is why it is implemented in the form of Z, the cross sectional area that is it is known as the Z method since V method the position of transmitter and receiver are included like a V in the cavity as we can see this is in the, showing the V cavity over there in the <coughs> panel and in the W method it is being implemented as a W method and the, the beams of the ultrasonic wave falls from the in Z method in the pattern of like bluish line as you can 
clearly seen in the yellowish line is there that is the pattern of the ultrasonic wave in V method you can see clearly see that in once a transmitter and receiver is added at the both the ends from the transmitter the yellowish light is showing you the wave coming and reflecting back to the panel and going back to the transmitter receiver end from the another part in the wave waveform similarly it is obstructing two times in the V method and in the W method it is obstructing three times and getting in the receiver and transmitter end Parallelly, if you see about the Doppler ultrasonic flow meter, it works on the principle of Doppler shift. That is, whenever the <coughs> transducer is emitting the ultrasonic waves, as per the flow direction, as per the partic particles been having the flow direction, as after the obstruction from the particles, that is being also shifted back. And as per that shifted back waves, that is the reflected waves is going back to the transducer and it is been measured. It's the transducer is getting the data from the reflected back wave and that reflected back wave gives you the shift data of the ultrasonic flow and as per that shift data we are getting to the flow range of the which direction the flow it is and what is the flow data is. So the transit time ultrasonic flow meters works with clean liquids like water, oils and chemicals. The advantages of using this type of ultrasonic flow transducer is it is having the obstruction with the less flow. It is unaffected by change in temperature, density or velocity. It is capable of measuring the bidirectional flow. It has the capacity of use being utilized at very low power consumption. So these are the advantages of having the transit time ultrasonic flow transducer. If you talk about the disadvantages, we are having very high dependent on the velocity profile and it requires non-porous pipe material. It requires periodic recalibration. That's These are the disadvantages of having this transit time ultrasonic flow transducers. Now coming to the Doppler ultrasonic flow transducer, they are common uh, flow meters which are having irritated liquids, raw sewage or any liquid with over having 100 particles per minute of suspended solids. So in that those scenarios we can use the Doppler ultrasonic flow transducers and the advantages of having this Doppler ultrasonic transducers are they are common Mm -hmm. <coughs> clamp on various versions are available and easily installed without having process shutdowns there also they, it can be installed in bi-directional way flow measurement is not affected due to change in viscosity of the process the meter produces no flow obstructions over here the disadvantages includes uh, the sensor may be uh, like detect some sound energy traveling in the causing and it can give you the artifact and uh, error reading due to the interface reading errors it is uh, having one of the severe disadvantages its accuracy depends on the difference in velocity between the particles the instruments require periodic recalibration that is also one of the demerit over here so the ultrasonic flow meters most commonly we have seen going to see being in an instrumentation part uh, in the biomedical field, they are basically used in the blood flow meters. Okay, so the, we are going to have this uh, flow transducer utilization over there. So we can clearly see uh, the measurement of the blood flow that is very much required in that scenario. That we're gonna use the blood flow meters. So that can be having this various types like electromagnetic blood flow meter. We can have the electric blood flow meter. We can have the ultrasonic blood flow meter. In that we are going to have the transit time blood flow meter and the Doppler blood flow meter. Both the blood flow meters are using the same principle and it is being utilized over here. Like I already said about a blood flow meter, we are going to have the electromagnetic flow meters over there. So this uh, electromagnetic flow transducer is having utilized in the electromagnetic blood flow meters or flow meters. So these uh, are having the known as the magnetic flow or magmeters also that uses the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction to determine the flow of the liquid in the pipe. 
So the operating principle of this uh, electromagnetic flow meter is the operation of magnetic flow meters is based upon the Faraday's law, which states that voltage induced across any conductor as it moves at right angle through the magnetic field is proportional to the velocity of the conductor. As per utilization of this law in this flow meter, that is the electromagnetic flow meter, we can detect and we can conclude, we can get the data of the flow of the liquid or any gas inside the pipe or wherever this flow meter has been added. This is a typical diagram which is used in the industries for the in the terms of electromagnetic flow transducers. So it is what's happening. We're having the two strong magnets having the north pole and south pole in between the pipe is been added up. And as per the these magnets are being charged with the coils, electromagnetic coils, so that when the electricity is passing in between them, they are acting as an electromagnet and they are generating on field. So this magnetic field is very strong and uh, whenever the pi uh, any um, particles is passing through that uh, field, it is disrupted uh, and it's charged being distributed as per the sequential charge alignment is present due to that magnetic field and due to that uh, alignment we will get the measurement of the data in which direction the flow is happening either it's a bi-directional flow it's a unidirectional flow or in which direction at what speed a particle is moving that's a bit it's like we have tracked the gps on side the particle and we are tracking it like on that in the fat flow so that as per the gps movement is there we are getting the data of that flow of the particles in that flow of gas or liquid whatever there inside the pipe so common applications of having this electromagnetic flow transducers uh, in order of usage in, in the water and waste, water waste industry and in chemical industry, food and beverages, bulk and paper industry, metal and mining industry, pharmaceutical industries, all these are the common application of having this electromagnetic blood flow transducers. The advantages of having this uh, electromagnetic blood flow on uh, flight drawn and is are having this one the that can be used for the detection of the bidirectional flow. They have do not have any kind of flow obstruction to them. It can measure the multi-phase, however, all the components should be moving at the same speed. It can be used with fluids with conductivity greater than 200 U holes per centimeter. The disadvantage is of having this electromagnetic flow transducer that is it is above the average cost means it is a little bit expensive in nature. The accuracy of this uh, transducer is affected by the slurries containing magnetic solids. The line must be full when have no air bubbles should not have any kind of air bubbles inside it I mean, it means that there should not be any kind of foreign particles present in the pathway to obstruct the things in some application appropriate mechanical protection for the electrodes must be provided so that it should not disturb or degrade the equipment so these are some advantages and disadvantages of having this uh, electromagnetic flow transducers now we're gonna see about the respiratory gas flow transducers. So, as the name suggests, respiratory gas flow transducers, we are gonna deal with the respiratory gas flow. So, respiratory gas it will release with the respiratory system. When talking about a respiratory system, two things come in our mind. Two machines is very common: ventilators and the anesthesia machine. So. They are the machine which is being targeted and utilizing these flow transducers. As per the definition goes on, the ventilator and anesthesia machine are used to support breathing in the patients who have the loss of the ability to breathe on their own. The process of ventilation requires certain volume of air and oxygen mixes to be supplied to the patient based on their lung and clinical condition. This requires feeding the patient with precise gas 
mixture at optimum flow rate. Flow sensors are used in RGM that is a respiratory gas flowmeters to measure the flow rate and the volume of the supplied gas to the patient and may be placed both inside and outside of the respiratory gas flow meters. The flow sensor placed inside the respiratory gas monitor before inspiration measures the individual gases so that the gas mixture is delivered as per the prescription. Some flow sensors are placed in close proximity to the patient to measure inhaled and exhaled gases. Some flow sensors are placed nearby to the expiratory valve to measure the expired gas mixture. The ventilator and anesthesia flow sensor are delicate and are a critical component to make breath measurements. Accuracy of measurement in this is mandatory to calibrate the flow sensor when using for the first time and periodically as recommended by the manufacturer. Whenever we gonna use the flow sensor in terms of ventilation or in anesthesia machine, basically uh, they are dealing with the giving the oxygen or we can say the gas, inhalable gas, okay, to the patient by the help of this one various uh, uh, machine like ventilator and anesthesia there are so many categories of patient which is being uh, treated with this the help of respiratory machines like uh, our uh, ventilator and anesthesia machine as per the requirement in this what happens we they have to give the precise amount of the flow of the oxygen or the breathable gas to the patient so in that the flow sensor works as a very 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 vital role gives a very vital role over here so in this to measure the respiratory gas flow it is very much important to use the proper flow sensor and the calibrated one so there are some technologies of the flow sensor and as per that the measurement is being differentiated. The very first in that the hot wire aniometry technology. Second one is the differential pressure technology. Third one is the ultrasonic flow sensor technology. Last one we have the pneumotachograph technology. All these four flow sensor technologies are being used in the respiratory gas flow transducers. So uh, this is the image which is showing you the hot wire aniometry technology. That means in the right side of the image we can see that heating element is there and left side we can see the whole image. So what's happening? This heated any heating element is being heated up up to some extent by the giving of the stimulus and as per the flow is being inserted in the tube, this heating element is giving you the change in temperature. And as well as the change in temperature is occurring. The clearly the measurement of the flow is been measured as per the change in temperature flow is being measured with the help of this hot wire anemometry. Breathing analyzers. Breathing analyzers are basically the gas analyzers that allows the continuous measurement of the respiratory gas concentrations from at various scales. It houses an infrared carbon dioxide sensor and optical oxygen detector. The CO2 or O2 respiratory gas analyzer samples expired gas from a mixture of chamber with a damped micro vacuum sampling pump. A breathing analyzer or breathalyzer is a device which used for estimating blood alcohol content or to detect viruses or diseases from a breath sample. Breath analyzers do not directly measure blood alcohol content or concentration which requires the analysis of blood sample.
the photovoltaic assay used in the dated photoelectric intoximeter is form of a brief testing relay encountered today the process of working by using photocells to analyze the color change of the redox that is oxidation or reduction reactions infrared breathalyzers allow a high degree of specificity for ethanol typically evident breath alcohol instrument in police station will work on the principle of infrared spectroscopy this is the image which you are seeing right now of a typical breathing analyzer which is used for the measurement of the breathable gas present in the body while the exhalation phase is going on fuel cell gas sensor are based on the oxidation of ethanol to ethylodized on an electrode the electrode produced is proportional to the amount of alcohol present semiconductor gas sensor are based on the increase in conductance of a tin oxide layer in the presence of a reducing gas such as vaporized ethanol so wrapping up with this chapter we have understood about the biological pressure and flow transducer in that we have studied about the pressure transducers physiological pressures which are present in our body we have studied about various pressures like blood pressure pressure in the lungs pressure in the intestine pressure in the eyes pressure in the brain skull and we have seen the blood pressure measurement methods that is the various methods invasive method non invasive method commonly used method with the uh, sphygmomanometer the traditional method we have seen we have studied about the flow transducers how the flow transducers are present how what is the use of flow transducer how the flow transducer working mechanism is there in that we have studied about the electromagnetic blood flow probe meter we have studied about the ultrasonic blood flow transducers we have also seen the respiratory gas flow transducers which is a plays a very very crucial role in the device like ventilator and anesthesia machines which is very important for the icu and uh, shows very important role in the medical field we have studied about the breathing analyzers that is used for the measurement of the presence of various contents in the exhaled air of the human body whatever inhalation or exhalation phase is going on whenever we are exhaling something it has some contents over there so this slide include the references which has been included in this whole ppt if you want to read more about the things you can refer this references and read more about this chapter thank you for uh, listening hope to see you in the next chapter